Hello guys and welcome to Anatevic Samolara. In today's video we're going to be diagnosing a turbo uh, underboost condition in this Sprinter van right here. We're actually getting ready to uh, uh, go on a test drive. I already have my computer plugged in. So I want to see what, what's it doing. So we're just gonna shut the hood. So meet Michael. How you doing Michael? Hey. Thanks hey, for coming yes. over. So look at this beautiful van that Mike is having here. We'll give you guys uh, a nicer tour, probably like in a different video. But right now we're actually gonna diagnose a turbo underboost condition. And it's one out of 13 codes. So before deleting anything, I do wanna give it a test drive. And uh, hopefully we don't get stuck getting out of here. <laughs> Um, okay. Brake. Oh, you you use the brake, huh? I don't use a brake. I wasn't sure with the hill, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah, definitely. So I'm basically going to go up over here and turn around. I just have so many so many cars here. I normally park that, that Chrysler like a little bit further away. My, my wife likes to park it right there where it is. Easy. Uh, yeah. Right, huh? And then I could have like easily like, you know, just went in between the cars. This is like iCar software, guys. Uh, in a different video, guys, we're gonna hook up um, Star Diagnosis computer as well. And we're gonna try to dive deeper into the issues. But right now, this is a generic code. Um, Turbocharger slash supercharger on the boost uh, And as you can see there's 13 codes. I don't want to really dive into those other codes right now We're just gonna try to test drive it right now and just see how it behaves. That, that's actually the The first thing that I want to do I want to see how it actually accelerates if it's normal or not accelerate above 65 miles an hour let's see if we can press it some more downhill it works well so here's what I could tell so far it's not a lot mode which is good yeah well we just started it too yeah we just started it so so it does kick in do you have a lip mode sometimes okay so currently it does not feel like it's a lip mode it accelerates slightly below the normal type of range but at least it's not a lip mode. Like in a normal driving situation, this would pretty much do. Uh, by the way, we're gonna go about two, three miles down, down the road, yeah. uh, and it's a perfect spot to actually do the test drive because either on the way there or on the way back, it goes into lip mode. It's usually far enough drive. And uh, this is actually where my lake is at, uh, at this location. <clears throat> so let me tell you guys what this actually means. Uh, when turbo is under boosted, usually it's a mechanical issue, but the computer picks it up and it's, it does uh, be able to tell that it's under boosted. And what's going on is the turbo cannot spin fast enough uh, due to the fact that the turbo veins are not opening up far enough. Uh, it could mean like several different things. One of them could mean that the turbo is not clocked properly. Uh, another one that the actuator, turbo electronic actuator, it's not doing its job. Usually not the case. Uh, and the next thing is the actual turbo, it's turbo veins, they're just not opening up properly. And that's either because they are damaged 
and they're not opening up all the way or maybe there's uh, some kind of debris that's keeping them from opening up properly that's inside the turbo uh, maybe they're bent and they're just like not opening up all the way and when they cannot open all the way it cannot really breathe enough so exhaust gases cannot get out fast enough the air cannot get in fast enough causing the turbo not to spin fast enough so you know even if it's off by a little bit it's gonna throw this code uh, where it's under boosted now if the turbo is okay that turbo actuator is not there's a turbo uh, actuator leg that uh, is controlled electronically and this opens up the turbo and it closes the turbo uh, that leg sometimes the mechanical portion of it uh, it gets uh, seized uh, there's these C clamps there and basically a lot of rust uh, develops there with age I'm not sure how long it really takes for one to get seized, but this is such a common issue I already seen it like a lot I've seen it with other people's vehicles and you go look and the turbo actuator actually works, but uh, I would compare this situation to if you if you have like your own arm you have an elbow you have a shoulder So at the shoulder your arms gonna be working fine, but let's say your armor is bent at 90 degrees and you really cannot, uh, you know, like stretch out your arm. You really can't do much with that arm. And this is what's going on with the turbo. It moves at the at the shoulder, but it does not move at the elbow. So it's like it's like only getting it open halfway. And if it could have just that little elbow, you know, move out like that, it would open up the turbo fully. And that portion where it's actually getting stuck at is actually the portion that it. It basically kind of like welds itself onto the turbo with rust. So that is the issue there. Um, hey, Michael, have you tried deleting this code by any chance? Uh, only with the computer and not knowing really what I was doing. Okay. So, no. <laughs> oh, they're building bathrooms here. How nice. We're really getting a lot of changes back here. Uh, <laughs> that is so cool. They got bathrooms here. Yeah, that's nice. They never had bathrooms here before. I was hoping that's what they were building and they have a lot more plates over there those concrete plates so they're probably gonna build maybe like a lot of gas cells so the the actual gas pedal is vibrating at this point a little bit there's probably some weakness and this is probably why let me see if how weak it's up uphill it actually seems like accelerating okay um, what I'm going to do is we're just gonna loop around and just turn around so with a really nice view of the lake, we're going to observe um, some other codes that we're getting. And then what I'm gonna try to do is, if it's okay with you, Michael, let's delete the codes and see what stays and what comes back. All right. We're just gonna park over here somewhere. Where it says no parking. <laughs> parking so let's see what else we're getting um, it's, it's okay here it is okay so turbo supercharger under boost uh, let's see so this code is not found in a database cylinder 6 glow plug circuit open guys so many times time and time and time again uh, when people are you know vehicle is going to limp mode and it's not pulling good or it's shaking and stuff they think it's a glow plug uh, that it works like uh, spark plugs do you know how the spark plugs they go out a little bit they're electronic and they're required for the engine to properly uh, fire and everything it's not the same case with uh, sprinter so glow plug is not gonna do nothing uh, except because you're sprinting not to start good in cold weather um, so cylinder four glow plug, we have mass or volume air flow sensor circuit range performance. So mass airflow sensor could be off uh, a little bit. It is throwing a code for it, but it could be due to a different fact. Okay. Um, mass airflow sensor, if it's giving bad readings, uh, if it gets bad enough, you're just not gonna even be able to start your van up. You'll start it up and it shuts down okay. immediately. Um, we could test this if this comes back um, I will be repairing my 2012 but hoping mine is good maybe we could swap it out 
okay. it's really easy and uh, you know we'll test to see if that problem actually leaves um, so we have exhaust gas recirculation control circuit range performance so this is a typical uh, EGR issue and a lot of times when I speak with you guys on the phone about these issues one of the uh, leading causes of turbo under boost when this is actually happening it's actually due to the fact that uh, I guess uh, the EGR is actually bad but sometimes people think it's an EGR but it's actually the turbo so it's one of the confusing things a lot of times people are like EGR 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 but they're pressing it way too many times uh, they just keep saying it's EGR EGR but not everything can be blamed on the EGR but if it is showing up it's a good sign that it's probably not functioning correctly we also could use uh, an EGR from my van you okay. know if, if if need be but when I clear these codes only the current ones will come back you know uh, the fault code is not found so that's another generic so catalyst temperature sensor circuit range performance break one so <clears throat> this one since it's a gen generic you know this is not a current you know like a, a code that you know for Mercedes I'm guessing that the catalyst is the actual particulate filter that's underneath the van and one of the sensors the knock sensors could be bad which also will cause an issue with with pulling and stuff and it will cause a check engine light to stay on uh, that's one of the problems there is a fix for it I've seen one guy you know what he did he pulled that sensor out he wrapped it in something shut the hole oh, so, really? the, the, so it's getting proper readings I guess with we like, replaced two knock sensors already from but the guy bought them on eBay and yeah. the, the Mercedes dealer in yes. Tennessee said they had 5,000 miles on them Really? On the sensors, but he put them in, and it's been, you know, it's been running okay. So. Okay, so we have another one, turbo supercharger under boost again. So that's a second code, PO299. This is the most common uh, code that I'm actually getting when I, when I speak to somebody on the phone. The fault code is not found for this one. So another glow plug code uh, and another mass air flow sensor code. So we have two codes for the mass air flow sensor. Uh, and another catalyst uh, sensor so this seems to me that another knock sensor perhaps so let's see uh, let's exit out of this let's go ahead and uh, erase these codes and see if anything comes back on the, on the drive back Was this the same codes you were getting when you plugged the computer in? I have them on my I actually have the phone, uh, you know, with the codes. Yeah, yeah. They'd be really interested to see if that's what they are. Because I forgot them now, too. I look at so many different codes. Because um, sometimes, you know, people send me this kind of stuff in emails and whatnot. Uh, hits clear and reset. Clear and reset emissions related diagnostic information failure. Please confirm and turn ignition on with engine off. Let's just do one more erase. Emission related diagnostic information has been cleared. So let's read codes and see, see what we have. Vehicle has no fault codes. Beautiful. If that could only fix the problems. Right. <laughs> Apparently, a deleting them does not solve the issue. But it gets rid of noise. So this whole time we've been driving, Serge, I have not noticed the limp mode that I noticed the whole time. It's scared so of me. You drove great. It accelerated up the hill. We'll wow. see. We'll see if it comes. You know, back. that's that is like such a common issue. Yeah, it's like yeah. everybody's like, you know, they're driving, experience all this problem, then they take it to a mechanic. It's not doing anything. Right. right now there's no vibration in the gas pedal it's acting normal we had okay I'm getting slight vibrations here but so a little bit more it seems like it's just kind of like flappy like almost I'm also hearing noise okay this is a good sign it's a good sign there's two problems that is where that noise could happen one of them is a good one one of them is a bad one 
that sound that that we're hearing is uh, I I basically hear it's either the rubbing sound of the turbo you know when the veins open up okay. because they cannot open uh, like far enough it is uh, kind of like this rubbing you know okay it's a really highly accelerated you know type of uh, sound but it, it will actually create the sound shh, you know um, like air leaking like basically. almost like air leaking so another one I was gonna say the second one is air leaking and such a common issue with these uh, air leaking underneath like over there because there's um, a rubber seal where it seals at the turbo and sometimes when people actually attach the pipe it gets all twisted up uh, and it's not attaching properly okay. so you're gonna have this leak going on over here and it's the turbos being under boosted but it's not bad enough so it does not throw the code over boost okay. because when you're gonna have a, a leak a boost leak it's going to be leaking so much that the turbo needs to compensate so it's over boosting so then it's going to throw a limp mode saying that hey you know there's a you know it's there's an issue because it's spinning too fast you know because it's trying to compensate for the all the lost air so technically a lot of these codes are being thrown for the for the right reasons so I am hoping that the sound that we're hearing, because it more sounds like a boost leak than a rubbing sound, but they sound so similar. So I'm hearing it okay. So now what we're gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to accelerate it. So I put my foot down on the gas all the way since the beginning. Okay, now we're getting lip mode. Okay. Uh, it's at about, 48 miles an hour it started accelerating very very slowly so I let off the gas right now we may have to shut it down again which what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass my house we're gonna stop at the gas station shut it down and then start it back up because sometimes a cold will not get triggered while you're driving on the way back until the next time it kind of like you know had an issue to, you know like uh, enough time to come back so now I'm going to try to step on it here and see what kind of acceleration we're getting. I will say this, it's accelerating a lot slower than a, a five-cylinder engine. But it's going above 70. So it's like, it feels like it's a limp mode, but it's not a limp mode. It's just the turbos, uh, I think it's losing some air. Or it's not opening up fast enough. One of those things. But it will be easy to tell. Um, all we have to remove is like your, you know, air filter box. Have you looked in there by any chance? No. Okay. We need to take a look at it. It's really easy. We just move it out of the way. Um, a while ago, one of my friends, we met up at a, a truck stop. He had the same issue on this newer type of van. And uh, he just got it back from the dealer. The dealer did some stuff to it. And he says it doesn't, it does not accelerate good. Well, guys, I looked under the box and the turbo was actually disconnected. Like that rubber piece was all so twisted up. I fixed it and it was like, man, it fixed it so good. He was like so happy. Cause he thought he needed like a new turbo. Cause that's what he was told by the dealer. Yeah, yeah. So they'll tell you anything. It's like, they, they don't even look. They don't, they, I think here's the thing is, they get paid not to think. Like if they're thinking they're not making money for the dealership, they need to tell you you need a new turbo, you need a new turbo actuator, and just to make it good enough, let's just get you a new ACU while we at it, and right. new everything else, you know. When they could have simply cleared the codes, find out what, what else comes back, and try to maybe, you know, like uh, address that issue. But what I've normally seen is uh, that SD, SDS system uh, that I got from you, uh, they have that at the Mercedes. But what they do to the customers, they give you diagnostics, they do a printout of all the codes, and you're like, hey, so what's wrong? Oh, so here's all the codes, we have a printout. So what does that mean? Like, yeah, that, that's a problem, we're gonna need to replace this and that. And they tell you all this stuff that you gotta replace just because it's got the codes there. As a matter of fact, one of the viewers that's having an issue right now with a turbo limp mode with his van, it is a 2014 van, uh, four cylinder. And he sent me so many receipts from the Mercedes. Guys, there's like at least $14,000 in bills. And I looked at the receipts and so many unnecessary things were replaced. And 
that's just the thing and I'm like looking at it like just shaking my head I'm thinking man they're charging this poor guy all this price is like I'm thinking I didn't replace them on my old van what is the new van having all this stuff replaced for so we don't see any codes guys no check engine light on right now so we're gonna shut it down let's start it back up so no code has come back but sometimes my computer uh, we'll actually catch codes uh, even though they're not showing up so we have uh, a generic code that's pending but it's not found in the database uh, this is a PO 64 C we are doing just a generic uh, codes right now uh, now I'm going to try to scan it using uh, the actual sprinter type of diagnostics usually just to make it easier um, I just do the generic test. So we have Sprinter. I think I selected the wrong Sprinter. I always get confused with these. The actual like 906, 901, you know, like all those things. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just like always... Uh, forget like which which ones met for which years I really have to study up on that so it's scanning now for the actual sprinter stuff let's see what we could get Hopefully I'd selected the proper type of vehicle model and we'll actually get the full readings. See, having it scanned, you know, using the Mercedes stuff, <clears throat> it takes a little bit longer because now it it actually could see some stuff. Um, okay, so it looks like I did not select the proper one. Uh, 690, 906, is this a 906? <laughs> I get confused with this stuff. Let's see if 906 will work. Okay, now it's working, yeah. Now we can see we're getting somewhere. Okay, so we have all of these things that we could diagnose. Look, a lot of different systems. Um, this is a six cylinder, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just do a uh, cylinder. So let's read the memory. Charge pressure is too low. So it's detecting basically low turbo pressure. Uh, charge pressure is too high. <laughs> so look, it detected both, which is good. So it's detecting a boost leak and it's detecting uh, that it's just too low. So probably it's too low because it's just there's a boost leak mm. hopefully that's the case because a boost fix is pretty much free rubber seal yeah yeah it's pretty much free you know uh, so let's see okay component N14 glow output stage has a malfunction so this is for glow plugs uh, the learned value of pressure regulator valve has exceeded the upper limit value so this is probably has to do with the turbo. <clears throat> Temperature sensor catalytic converter, the signal charge rate is above the permissible limit value. So it is a catalytic converter. Wait a minute. Would that have to do with a particular filter though? Well, catalytic converter is a particulate filter. Technically, it's a new style of filter. It's just they're they're not saying particulate, say catalytic mm. converter. But I've I've heard people you know get confused sometimes. They say they re they really replace a particulate filter. But they say they replace a catalytic converter. But it would be weird if it had both, wouldn't it? 
you have catalytic converters then you have the particular I would have to look <laughs> because what if it does have a catalytic converter who yeah, knows I don't know. yeah I don't know with this new emissions it's like you know you'll be surprised they keep adding this stuff um, so I'm gonna clear this fault memory using this computer right now and I think the very next step we need to do is we need to actually observe the turbo we didn't get the mass airflow sensor this time okay so perhaps they got triggered along the way or maybe with an old engine when they put it in they didn't clear the old codes this happens okay. sometimes so we're gonna clear the codes so the computer will remember all the faults in the old engine even though it's got a new yeah. engine uh, well until they're cleared here's out. the thing because they're stored in the ACU the ECU was not replaced the engine was replaced so right. the ACU thinks it's an old engine that was Same still engine. in there yeah. Yeah, yeah so it just keeps those codes as a matter of fact whatever we delete here the computer I got from you will probably find uh, those stored codes somewhere inside the computer still uh, so a lot of times you could think oh I just deleted the codes and this and that uh, you go to the dealer but they can still find them because they're still safe, stored so. yeah. yeah so we, we could then further delete them and then we could also do uh, we could do an adaptation for this van we could do an adaptation for your gas pedal I think this is not doesn't have the proper adaptations um, because you know the engine gets swapped out things are working a little bit differently and when you do the adaptations it will like be like reset like from factory so the travel of the pedal is yeah. different with yeah because it's electronic so uh, okay. it, you know when you reset that it's just gonna be like you just got the van and it's gonna it's gonna learn how you drive it I see okay you haven't been really driving it for that often but it may be already learned how you drive I drove it right all on the interstate but yeah. from Atlanta to the west coast the west mm -hmm. coast back here so pretty far <laughs> Not, so, much, not much city driving though. Yeah, you know what's weird? <laughs> you gotta check engine light off. It's not showing me a single code. I cleared them, but I'm thinking the check engine light is off. You can clearly see. So, the very next step is we just need to... Man, look how it's vibrating. Yeah, it really clears up when you move a little bit. You know what's happening? I think you have bad motor mounts. Really? Yeah. It should be vibrating like this at all. The only time it should be vibrating like this if, if you're, um, and even worse than this, because look, your mirror is shaking yeah. wildly. Imagine all your connectors are shaking apart. All of these things that's not like in here, there's just a heavy vibration. So it, it moves. So this definitely, you could tell it's a uh, motor mounts. Okay. Not very common. Huh. Not very, I haven't seen uh, this, this problem on sprinters at all. But I'm sure when they installed a new engine, maybe they, they, you know, when they were installing it, something along the lines, it's always, that's, that's where you always have to look back for the problem. It's like, you look what was done before. So when they installed it, something was done or not done to cause this issue to happen. Cause it really clears up good. Like right now it's just really amazing. Yeah, yeah it's, it's amazing. But the uh, pedal does vibrate. And that's probably because it's weakness. It's just being weak right now. So, I'm going to pull in my driveway, get some tools out, and we'll remove that air box and uh, see what's going on on that one. My name is Serge Zamaleta. I'm 37 years old. And yes, I experienced success after buying my first home for cash. Back in 2011, I was broke, but I learned to solve problems on my own. Now I'm helping others to solve their problems. I know what pitfalls to avoid to stay profitable in business. Need motivation to be more successful in your life? Do you have Sprinter Expedite or business problems? Then subscribe. Let's find creative solutions to your problems. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my helpful videos.